are listening to the song, we pray that the song will minister to our soul in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Forgiving your sins, begin to thank him for saving the wretch like you. Hallelujah to his name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, ancient of days. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, merciful God. Thank you, I am that I am. Thank you, Prince of Peace. Thank you, ancient of days. Thank you, merciful God. We thank you for the salvation of our soul. We thank you for forgiving our sins. Thank you for writing our names in the book of life. Hallelujah to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Very quickly, through the help of the Holy Spirit, we are going to be hearing a message that is called Sacrifice and Obedience. Sacrifice and Obedience. Ancient of this, we thank you. Merciful God, we give you glory. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your death and resurrection. Thank you for the blood that was shed at Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for loving us, Lord. Glory be to your name in the highest. Father, we pray that you speak your word to us, Father. And Lord, we pray that you help with the interpretation, O God. Father, we pray that you give us the power and ability and the grace and desire, passion and the zeal to obey your word in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Lord. Make us the doers, O Lord, and not the hearers or the speakers alone, Father. That your name may be glorified, O Lord, for eternity. Cant us word in your kingdom, Lord. Write our names in the book of life in heaven, Lord. And when the trumpet shall sound, O God, any time, day or night, Father, cant us worthy in your kingdom, Father. Amen. Let your name be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Glory be to God. You captured the children today. Okay. Amen. amen. Okay. Now, sacrifice and obedience. Sacrifice and obedience. I believe we all know what sacrifice is all about and what obedience is. In case there is anyone that just wants to know there are some words that are so close to us that we might not even really know what, it, what the definition might be. Or we don't really know how to define it. We just know it, but we don't know how to define it. But for that sake, for the sake of that, I want to say sacrifice is offering animals pers or persons or things that are valued by you or those that are of great importance to you to offer sacrifice, to offer freely. Or with difficulty. Because when you call it sacrifice, sacrifice is not an offering that is easy for you. It's something that you are compelled to give. Something, it could be animal, it could be person, it could be things. And those are the things that are so much daring or valued by you. And those that are of great importance to you. For instance, when the Lord told Abraham to sacrifice his only son 
to him when he was trying him. And he did not, he did not, he did not think that, that that was the only child he had. That was the only son through Sarah, his wife. And that was supposed to be the broad promised child, apart from Ishmael, that was born to Abraham by the slave woman. So he took the child, he was about to give him up as sacrifice unto the Lord when the Lord provided alternative. So that is sacrifice. Human, it could be human in that manner of Abraham, it could be animal. And when you say, the reason why animal becomes sacrificial is because it has to be some kind of special animal. You don't just pick any animal and you offer it to God in those days. In the days of the Old Testament, you pick the best of the best. And some of them even look for money. Some of them could not even afford them. They look for money yearly to make sure that they did such sacrifice. So that, that was why it became, it became sacrificial for them. Because some of them did not have that money to do it. Not everybody had money to buy a lamb or any of those uh, sacrifices. That was the reason why some of them were buying, buying pigeon and some other little things if they could not afford animal. Amen. So that is sacrifice. Obedience is to fully submit or a full submission or compliance to instruction, correction, direction, or commandment. I repeat, obedience is full submission or compliance to instruction, correction, direction, or commandment. To be submissive to instruction, to be submissive to correction, and to be submissive to direction or commandment that is given to us. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, 2 Timothy 3, 16, the Bible told us what the word of God is meant for. The word of God that we read daily, that the Bible, it carries some strong, three important information. And one of them is reproach. Three important information and the fourth one is to reproach now the three one is what you must do why the fourth one is the punishment or the chastisement of not doing them second timothy i read from verse chapter three. Second timothy i read chapter three from verse 16. second timothy chapter three from verse 16 yes all scriptures, all scriptures is given by inspiration of God. Yes. And is profitable for doctrine. For doctrine. For reproof. For reproof. For correction. Correction. For instruction. Instruction. In righteousness. In righteousness. That the man of God may be complete. Yes. Thoroughly equipped. For, for every, every good work. You see? So that is the word of God. What word of God is all about. That's what the Bible is all about. For correction. For instruction. Direction. And to reproof. So that we can be totally complete and blameless. Amen. Amen. So that we can be totally complete and blameless. That is what the word of God is for. So we want to proceed now that we, we understand what sacrifice and obedience is. Because every word I'm going to speak now will be based on the sacrifice and obedience. So sacrifice, we know already that, is to painfully offer something dear into us. In exchange for our wrongdoings, in exchange for what you have done, or a penalty that is paid in wrongdoing, in refusal to submit. I'm putting the two together now, sacrifice and obedience. So, in other words, if there is disobedient, there will be what? There will be sacrifice. If there is obedient, there will be joy. But if there is disobedient, there will be what? Sacrifice. And the fact about it is that you do, if you do not obey, you will always have to sacrifice whether you like it or not. If you refuse to obey, yield to instruction, listen to, uh, to direction, you will always have penalty of sacrifice to pay. Anyone that refuses to obey, it could be your choice not to obey the word of God or direction or instruction, but definitely, whether you want it or you don't want it, there is a sacrifice to pay. Sacrifice is something that you go through voluntarily and painfully in exchange for the wrong that you have done or the in penalty for refusal to submit to instructions or to yield to, to direction. 
The second fact I want to talk about is the Lord wants absolute repentance, absolute obedience. That's what the Lord wants. Because he does not want any sacrifices anymore. The only sacrifice that we're supposed to do is been done for us by the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary after the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, they were using animals and different kind of blood and some farm products in exchange or it to pay sacrifice for all the sins that they committed. But the Bible told us that if animal could not wash away the stain of sin, and definitely the blood of Jesus was able to clean every sin away as a remission to all our sins. Animal was not able to clean it away. That was the reason why they were doing it yearly. Because before the end of another year, they have another one to pay. Before the end of another year, they have another one to pay. And that was the reason why Jesus Christ had to go to the cross as a living sacrifice for all our sins. And he himself took the sacrifice not by any earthly high priest or priests. He took it himself. The Bible said he took our sacrifice once and for all before the Lord God, our Savior, in the holiest of holy, of heavenly places. The kind of temple that was not built by anybody, that was not built by human. That is the temple of the Lord God Almighty. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 11 to 20. So this is saying that the Lord demands absolute obedience to all instructions, all corrections, and all direction that is in his commandment. Isaiah chapter 11, sorry, chapter 1, verses 11 to 20. Isaiah chapter 1, 11 to 20. We will see what the Lord says about sacrifice of the Israelite. Sacrifice of the Israelite. No, because some of them had money to buy these animals yearly. Because some of them, they think it's not even it became it, it came to a time that it was no longer sacrificial for them to do the sacrifices. Because it was supposed to be sacrifices that were sacrificial to pay for the penalty of the sins that they committed. But because it was no longer sacrificial, and they would just think at the end of the year, and the Lord actually gave room. The Lord did not permit them to commit sin and come every year to ask forgiveness. He said, it is only, those sacrifices were only for the sins that they committed unknowingly, not willful sins. But despite that, they were actually committing sins anyhow they want, especially when nobody would be able to catch them or when no punishment was coming towards them. So they will always believe that at the end of the year, whenever there is time to pay for all these penalty of sins, we offer our sacrifices and the Lord forgives us. Now look at what prophet, oh God, the, Lord, the message the Lord gave prophet Isaiah for the people. Verse 1, from verse 1, uh, sorry, 11 to 20. Isaiah 1, 11 to 20. He said, to what purpose is the, is the multitude of your sacrifices to me? Says the Lord, I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of lead cattle. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or goats. Twelve, when you come to appear before me, who has required this from, this from your hand to trample my courts? Bring no more fertile sacrifices. Increase is incense is an abomination to me. The new moons, the Sabbaths, and the calling of assembles. I can I cannot endure iniquity and the sacrifice and secret meeting. Your new moons, your appointed feast, my soul aches. They are a trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you when when you spread your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers. I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash your hands. Make yourself clean. Put away the evil of your doings from, uh, from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressors. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together. Says the Lord, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you, will, you, you shall eat the fruit of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. 
for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. What is the Lord saying there? Say, I have enough of these sacrifices. I have enough of your handimas every year. I have seen your all your religious practices of keeping Shabbat, keeping every every religious festival, but they do not they do not mean anything to me. You're coming before me yearly to offer bulls and animals and cows and singing and dancing. They do not mean anything to me. But what I want from you is total repentance. Repent from all your ways. And when after you are finished repenting, then come to me. Let us reason together. No matter how big your sin can be, I am willing to forgive you. And I'm willing to wash and cleanse you with the blood. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the fruit of the land. But if you rebel, if you refuse and rebel, you shall do what? You shall do what? Verse 20. You shall, you shall be, devolved. be devolved. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. Amen. So that is the second part. Don't forget the first part is you do not, if you do not obey, then you must be ready for sacrifice. If you do not obey, you must be ready for sacrifice, whether you like it or not. You must be ready. So it could be painful sacrifices. It could be it could be easy sacrifice, but there must be sacrifice for people that disobey. The second one is the Lord wants absolute repentance. He want he do, he's tired of sacrifices. He's tired of gifts. He's tired of dancing. He's tired of keeping festivals and religious activity. But he wants us to be what to repent and to stand before Him upright. Now, here I want to say a few things at this stage. The way we offer our own earthly sacrifices. The sacrifice that came after the death and resurrection of Jesus. Before Jesus, it was animal sacrifices. But after Jesus took the once and for all sacrifice of our sin to the heavenly, to heaven. Now people begin to bring back the thing that Jesus Christ died for. Begin to bring it back to the church. The church, you know, when something stays too long, the law is, is what I try to say is that if I bring a law here now, or a commandment or instruction, when the longer it goes, the weaker it becomes. Do you believe that? The longer something stays, the weaker it, be, it becomes. When there's a new law or new word or new instruction, it is always very sound, very hard, very tough, very good. And everybody keep keep it diligently. But when that Lord begins to stay for about two years, three years, seven years, ten years, two thousand years, it becomes what? Too weak. It becomes too weak. It's no longer like before. Then because it is too weak, then people begin to refashion, they begin to go back to the old, the kind of old practices. So that is why I want to mention these five ways. I call it modern day sacrifices. These are modern day sacrifices, which is not supposed to be anymore. Because Jesus has taken the sacrifice of our sin. But the church of God on earth, in this end time, they have brought back again sacrifices in a different fashion. Not longer in the animal form or bird or any farm product, but they have brought it back. Number one, way of earthly last day sacrifices. When people sin, they go their way. They do whatever they want to do through the week. Then when they come to the house of the Lord, they bring what? Number one, they bring songs and thanksgiving. Songs and thanksgiving. Amos chapter 5, 23 to 24. Songs and thanksgiving. Now people, we human beings, we are so smart. When we have gone out of our ways, behaving the way we want, Rejecting instructions, den rejecting correction, and denying direction, and we refuse to obey the commandment. But when we come before the Lord, we say, Thou art worthy. Now they call it, I call it songs and thanksgiving sacrifice. Amos chapter 5, 23 to 24. Let's see what the Lord says about that. Amos chapter 5. Amos is after the book of Prophet Joel. Chapter 5. Verses 23 to 24. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amos 5, 23 says, Take away from me 
the noise of your songs. Uh -huh. For I will not hear the melody of your spring is instrument. Mm. 24. But let justice run down like water mm. and righteousness like a mighty stream. Mm. You see that? That is the law speaking now. It's, if not for the sake of time, we'll have read it from the beginning and you see all of it. But what is important is the songs and thanksgiving sacrifices. Now, people sing sacrificially to God when they cannot live sacrificially for Him. They sing sacrificially for God. And what does it mean, living sacrificially? Now, we sing sacrificially, the Lord wants us to live sacrificially. In other words, the Lord, the kind of effort we put into song composition, into the energy of singing to praise and worship Him. I'm not saying that it's not good to sing. I am not saying that it's not good to worship God. It is good, because that is the only thing we can give Him. But He's saying that is not the only thing I require from you. I want you to put the same effort of singing. I want you to put the same effort of composing song to also living sacrificial, sacrificially for me. Amen. Amen. And the, that Amos says, take away from me the noise of your song. And the Lord, you see, when, when sinners sing, the Lord can't you look at it as, as noise. When the holy people sing, the Bible says the Lord inhabits the praises of his world, of his people. Another version of the Bible will say of Israel. Another version will say of his saints. When the saints sing to God, the Lord looking at a praise. But when sinners sing to God, the Lord look at a noise. That's, you look at what he calls. He says, take away from me your noise. Am I the one that wrote it there? But in the Bible, David says in the book of Psalm, the Lord inhabits the praise of his anointed or of his holy ones. And in this place, the Lord himself said, take away your noise from me. It's not a song. It's a noise of your song. You call it the noise of your songs. For I will not hear the melody of your strange instrument, but let justice, look at what it was. When you are singing to me, Always let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Did you offer me sacrifice and offering in the wilderness 40 years, O house of Israel? What he's saying is that when you were in the desert, in the wilderness, I did not require from you any sacrifice. You did not offer me anything, yet I protected you. Yet I bless you, yet I was your God, even in the 40 years in the wilderness. None of you offer me any sacrifice or anything. None of you offer me even praise in the wilderness. But I was still your God. So therefore, I don't need that to be pleased. You don't need that to suit me or to appease me. You don't need singing to appease me. Even though singing is good, but the singing is good from the mouth of those who seek justice and those who live righteously. When righteous people sing, the Lord rejoices. When sinners sing, the Lord is sorrowful. Because the Lord does not want their singing. The Lord wants their sacrificial lifestyle. A life of holiness. A life of righteousness. Hebrew chapter 13, verses 15 and 16. Hebrew 13, 15 and 16. Hebrew 13, Verses 15 and 16. He says, Therefore, by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. 16. But, look at that. But, he's saying that it is good to praise God, isn't it? It is good to worship him. Which I am not, dis I am not dis discrediting praising God, but he must come with a good heart. That is why the book of Psalms says, Who is he that does what? Psalm 24. In the book of Psalm 24, let's put our hand there and read, and read Psalm 24 from verse 7. Psalm 24 from verse 7. Psalm 24, verse 7. Anybody there? Uh, go back to former. He who has clean hands. Um, 
Uh, let's start from three, yes. Who may ascend into the hill who, of the Lord? Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? And who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands. He who has clean hands. And a poor heart. And a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul? Who has not lifted up his soul? To an idol. To an idol. Nor sworn deceitfully. And sworn deceitfully. Thank you, man. Let us see chapter 4, verse 5. The same sound. Chapter 4, verse 5. What does it say? Now, this is the sacrifice that he wants. Okay, let me postpone that. Let, let, let's postpone that till, till the end. Amen. 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 Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Number two. Don't forget the first one is... Oh, I have not finished reading that Hebrew. Hebrew 13, 15, and 16. Hebrew 13, 15, and 16. Hebrew 13, 15, and 16. It says, to praise God is good. To worship Him is, is great. But when you are doing all that, you should do what? It should come with what? I'll read it again. He said, therefore, by Him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks to His name. But, when, whenever you see anything and you see but, which means what I have to say now is more important. But, do not forget to do good. When you are praising him, be what? Be good. And share. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. With such sacrifices, God is well pleased. When you praise God, he said, you must pray God from the good heart. A pure heart. Not a sinful heart, and that is all repentant. And therefore, you just say, Oh, I have met so many Christians in my life, and I saw so, uh, one Christian was saying one day, Don't worry, whenever I have problems, I have the way I deal with it my, with my God. I know how I settle with him, me and my God. And how does, this, does she settle? Whenever she's in trouble, she go to her for another 40 days fasting. Is that a, a blessing or sacrifice? Is that a sacrifice or a blessing? Whenever a Christian go, when you have a problem, you say 40 days fasting, 7 days fasting, dry fast, I have to deal with it. Those are what we call sacrifice. There is obedience and sacrifice. I will soon come there when I want to round up. I just want us to say this quickly. Number two ways that, that the modern day sacrifice, number two. Modern day sacrifice, number two. The first one is they want to offer their lips to God. You see, and so you see some people whenever they just place before God after committing many sins, say, Lord, but then they begin to worship for the sake of what? Forgiveness. That's a sacrifice. It's good. Don't misunderstand me. Worship and song is a heart of glorifying God that the Lord delights in. But the Lord says, when you do it in an, a filthy mouth, a filthy lifestyle, He does not want it. That's what the Lord is saying. Despite the fact that he loves it, but he wants us to bring it with a pure heart and a clean, uh, with clean hands. Number two, offering tithes and gifts. Those are other sacrifices that people bring. People bring sacrifices of tithes and offering, and some of them are generous. You see a lot of people not born again, but very generous. The Lord might bless them here on heart in return. But they might not be able to receive the, reward, the heavenly reward because they are given to please God. They say, oh, perhaps if I give like this, maybe God will have mercy on me. If I give like because I have cheated a lot of people, I have committed a lot of sin, maybe if I begin to do like this, God, maybe God will have mercy on me. That is good. But it must come with repentance, not with continue to live that same lifestyle and continue giving, and you go back to steal, and continue giving, and go back to lie, and continue giving, go back to cheat, and continue giving, go back to forge document, and continue giving. That is what God does not like. He says he doesn't want those kind of offering, those kind of tithes. He doesn't want tithes from, from stolen money, or on truthful and unholy channel. Let us see what it says in this word. In Deuteronomy 23 verse 18, 2 Corinthians 8, verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 18. What does it say? Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 18. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Verse 18. You shall not bring the wages of a harlot or the price of a dog to 
to the house of the Lord your God, or any vowed offering, for both of these are an abomination to the Lord your God. You see that? He said, you shall not bring the wages of harlot or the price of a dove to the house of the Lord, for the, the house of the Lord our God, for any vowed offering. Both of these are abomination to the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. You see, those are the things. And what do the Bible? What does the Bible mean by the wages of Alot? You know what? Everybody know what the wages is. Which means somebody that offer any a woman that offer body to receive money and bring the tithe from that. I was watching a TV one day. Somebody asked, call on the TV, and he called a pastor on TV. He said, man of God, I want to know if if somebody is a prostitute and. Uh, they pay uh, can she pay tight and the pastor say oh yes he can pay but she need to repent later because if she doesn't repent she will not receive the reward but she can continue to be faithful with her tight that is very wrong i'm telling you that that answer is very wrong when god does not accept and if anybody tells you that when you bring such offering or tithe to the church that you can please god or appease god it's a lie god does not he said i do not want it and that is equal to Getting money through an unholy source, and when they say the wages of wages of harlot, and also the 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 price of a dog. Now the price of the go, uh, the dog. What what that means is that the price that is the money from an holy unholy thing. In those days, they think a dog to the house of God is unholy. So therefore, when they say the price of a dog, which means the money from a dog that is sold. It, it, it translates to getting money through an unholy source, like drug trafficking, like a robbery, arm robbery, like stealing, stealing, selling it and bringing the offering to the church, or lying of committing fraud and bringing the money to the church into offering or tithe, or even being generous about it and helping many people that I need. Somebody that performed internet fraud and giving the money to all the needy and helping the church and ministry to pay one, to offset one bill or the other is just wasting his effort and money. And even the church, if the church knows about that, the, the Bible says they must not receive such offering and such gift. Amen. So therefore, you must not and you cannot receive, please God, with such an holy gift. That's what the Lord says. With such an holy gift and offering. And 2 Corinthians 8, 5 tells us that you must first of all give your life to God first before you give him what? Your money. Apostle Paul said they first of all gave them themselves unto the Lord before to us as gift, before they came to help us. In other words, in the days of Apostle Paul, they were always looking for the support from, from brethren. They were always looking for what? Support from brethren, from Christians, not from anybody that is not born again. But today, children of God look for money from anybody, for anybody that cares to give, born again or not born again. We are just because we put so much burden on ourselves that that we will not be able to be here. We do things we overreach, touch overreach, ministers of God overreach, and they call it faith living, faith ministry, faith this thing. It is good to have faith, but the same Bible says before a man will build his house, he will first of all sit down to look at the cost of the building before it goes into to building. It's good to have faith, but you must also make your look, look at your costing before you go into it. You don't go into any program as a church, individual, or pastor, or ministry in the, with the all that God will make our member pay for it. That is very wrong. That is very wrong. Because when you do that, you begin to get money that is not supposed to be going into the ministry, into the work of God, on holy money, in money that are not decent. Prices of the things that God does not want. We will not begin to force things to happen because we have put ourselves in so much high places and overreach, so much that we will not be able to, to meet it. So when the church is in need, it's only the brethren that you speak to. The apostles spoke to only the brethren whenever they were in need. They will not go to the Gentiles and say, Gentiles, bring. Unbeliever, we need money. Bring your money from your idol, from your wages of adultery, from the price of your dog. That was not the way the disciples behaved. They behaved decently and they needed, whenever they were in need, they, they, they reached out to the church and the church gathered for all their, and they made sure they live within that limit of the provision of the church. Amen. Amen. So, what I'm trying to say is that we cannot use offering and tithe 
to replace our holiness and salvation. That is the summary of what I've said about number two. Number three, it says, it talks about sacrificial fasting. Look at that. Sacrificial fasting. There are some people, they believe only, I have met, I told you I have met many Christians in my life. Some Christians I have met, they believe in just fasting, fasting for useless matters. What the Lord designed fasting for is for us to combat the kingdom of darkness in such a way that we'll be free to live holy life. To fast for spiritual matters. To fast to please the Lord. To fast to be, to be holy. To fast to keep His commandments. To fast until we become complete and perfect. But people don't seek perfection. They don't seek come. Even though the Lord said, Be ye holy as your Father in heaven is holy. And be ye perfect as your Father in heaven is, is perfect. But Christians go around to say nobody is perfect. They say nobody is holy. And they stand at that point. It is one thing to believe something. It is one thing to pursue it. You see, what you don't believe, you can never attain it. If you are the Christian that believes that nobody is holy, and nobody is perfect, you can never be perfect and holy because you have put your limit to the kind of life you can live. You say, I will only do my... That, what you are saying is that I will only do my best. My best is the way I am. Nobody can be holy. But if nobody can be, why does the book of First Peter put it there? Chapter 1, can somebody read First Peter? Chapter 1, 16, another person read Matthew 5, 48. They are not in my way. I just want us to confirm something there. Matthew, yes, Matthew 5, 48. First Peter is number 16. Yes. Because it is written, yeah. be holy, for I am holy. Be holy. He said, because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. Matthew 5, 48, what does it say? Look at that. Therefore, that was the Lord Jesus speaking there. By the time he ran up his speech, he said, Therefore, considering all this teaching that I taught you, they are good enough for you to be perfect, as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now you see ministers and people in the Bible say nobody is perfect. Do you think heaven will receive imperfection? That is why the Bible says that anyone that, is, that overcomes is what Jesus Christ is coming for. Anyone that overcomes is what he's coming for. He's coming for those who overcome. And what do you overcome? Do you think he's talking about overcome the problem of poverty? Or the problem of education? Or your exam? That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about overcoming every sinful act in the world. Overcoming flesh. Overcoming immorality. Overcoming unfaithfulness. In other words, whenever you see a situation of unfaithfulness and lie and corruption or stealing, you are able to overcome with his help. By faith, then you are an overcomer. In the book of uh, uh, Revelation 21, if you read verse 8 quickly, a very fast passage, it's not also my way because I want to establish these people that fast for only car and fast for only when they want to buy a house. They fast for only when they want to get a job. They, they can go seven days or 40 days to get a job. They can go 20 days fasting to get a car. They can go 21 days fasting to have the enemy defeated in their family. But they cannot go one day because they want to be perfect or holy. Yes? Revelation 21. Yes. From verse 8. Yes. It says, mm -hmm. But the cowardly. But the cowardly. Unbelieving. Unbelieving. Abominable. Abominable. Murderers. Murderers. Sexual immorality. Sexual immorality. Immorality. Yes. Sorcerers. Sorcerers. Idolaters. Idolaters. And all liars. And all liars. Shall have their part in the lake which burn with fire and brimstone. Shall have their part which in the lake is. which burn with fire and brimstone, which is the second yes. death. And in the, the same Revelation 11, verse 12, what does it say? The same Revelation, uh, chapter 12, sorry. Chapter 12, verse 11 and 12, what does it say? Mm -hmm. And they did not stop their life to death. Mm -hmm. 12. Therefore, rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants. Jump to 22, verse 12 and 13. Chapter. 22. 
Revelation. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am be and behold, uh -huh. I am coming quickly. Yes. And my reward is with you. Uh -huh. To give to everyone according to his work. Uh -huh. I am the Alpha and Omega. Uh -huh. The beginning and the end, the first and the last. Amen. Amen. Now the Bible says, Behold, I am coming quickly. And to repay everyone according to his word, his works. Some people Christians say you don't you don't go by heaven by works, it's by faith. What is the faith? In the book of James chapter 3, he said there is no faith without what? Without works. So we are not preaching that you should be, you should be, uh, uh, what do they call it? They call it legalistic these days. They say, how you, you don't save yourself by works. It is true, we are not saved by works. We are saved by what? By faith in Christ Jesus. Because we could not even look at God because of our sin, but Jesus came and he acted as our intermediary between us and God, and he connected us to, to God. He removed all our sins by grace. Therefore, by doing that, he did not leave us to continue in sin. That is why I was supposed to say, can we continue in sin and add a sin that grace should abide? God forbid. He, he saved us so that we can start a new life, not to start a, a sinful life again. And that is why the, Jesus said, I am going to repay according to your works. He didn't say according to your faith. I am going to repay you according to your works, whatever you do on hand. So if anybody is telling you that you don't need to repay from anything, that is legalistic. Uh, don't, don't lie. Don't commit adultery. It's legalistic. It's by faith. They are deceiving you to hell. They are deceiving you to, to hell. So the Lord told them, he said, I don't need your fasting for nothing. All I need you to fast for is holiness. When you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, every other thing will follow you. How many times do Christians go to fast for, to be holy? How many times do we go to fast to be righteous? How many times do you go to fast and say, I want to be completed, God? I will not eat from Friday to Sunday after service unless I am holy. God, I don't like this way I'm living. I don't like, the more I want to live holy, I keep on lying. The more I want my heart to be pure. The Bible says, blessed are the pure in the heart, for they shall do what? They will see God. Which means if your heart is not pure, it is difficult to see God. How many times do we fast? Don't forget we are talking about sacrifice. Obedience and sacrifice. Now, what we are talking about is that when you sacrifice to obey, you will not sacrifice to sacrifice. I will explain to you what I mean by that very soon. Obedience also needs sacrifice. Because sometimes obedience is not convenient. When you want to obey God sometimes, you are, for instance, you lack money. You don't have money. You have not eaten. Morning, afternoon, and evening. You are praying to God for what to eat. And all of a sudden, you are going... Money drops from somebody's pocket, and you, it takes the grace of God to call the person and say, come and take your money. Isn't it? Yes. That is what I'm talking about. It's sacrifice. Sacrifice means things that it is bigger than your, your level. It's bigger than what you can do naturally. Say, God, please help me. I cannot take this money. It does not belong to me. Say, excuse me, madam, your money is there. Come and take your money. And yet you are not eating. And the person picked the money and said, thank you very much. And he continued say, hey, she didn't even share some with me. I thought she would, she would give me some if she find the money. Ah, woman being a wicked. Eh? What about if you have oh, 1,000 fair down pounds and I saw it for you. You cannot even remove 10 pounds to give me. Some people are very, some people are very bold. They go and meet the person and say, excuse me, madam. I found your 1,000 pounds. You cannot even give me 10. I'm hungry since. And the person will say, thank you for helping me find it. But I need the money myself. You see, he will not go and say, God, this life you ask us to live is not, is not profitable. It's not, how many people have done that before? When you tell the truth, regarding something, and you find yourself in trouble as a result of truth. <laughs> I, it has happened to me. I went to tell truth somewhere, and it, it, landed, it landed me and my family in serious trouble. I said, God, the Bible says... The Bible said, I was, I was quoting Bible back to God. I said, what is this, God? Eh? Why is the world like this? The Bible says, the, the, uh, righteousness will exalt a nation. That sin is a reproach. Now, I said, God, righteousness is putting a, a righteousness. I said, righteousness is putting the righteous in trouble. 
Sin has now become glory. You know, we, are, we apply, another one, another case that we apply for nationality for my wife in Ireland. So, to get it, you must not tell them you moved. You must not tell them you moved. You must use somebody's address. And the address, she can live with her husband or any spouse that is a, 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 a citizen can go anywhere in Europe. But the wife, if she has not got a home, she must remain in Ireland until they give her. That's part of the requirement. If you move at any time and they know application is withdrawn or cancelled. So we were here and, and we wrote a letter to them. In case you don't know, we are now, just to complete our righteousness, we are now living in Manchester, a case so, 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 so. The next week we just pass a letter to us and with all our form and file everything, cancel, withdraw, go on. That is the way it is. But you have to continue living. Because God knows when you are working with him. He knows when you are being righteous. That is sacrificial. Let, 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 let somebody see Psalm chapter 4 verse 5. Psalm chapter 4 verse 5 and 6. Book of Psalm 4, 5 and 6. Psalm, yes? Praise the Lord. Amen. 5, 4 he says, mm -hmm. Be angry and do not sin. Mediate. Psalm. Yeah, Psalm chapter 4. Yeah. From 4 and 5. Mm -hmm. I read. Be angry and do not sin. Mediate within your heart on, on your bed mm -hmm. and be still. Uh -huh. Five. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness. What does he say? Offer the sacrifices of righteousness. So righteousness is sacrificial. Mm. And put your trust in the Lord. Now when you do it, he said it's, it's coming with danger, but put your trust in him. It's coming with something, it might come with something you don't like, but put your trust, because God will repay you. It might look as if God has not done anything, but he will definitely repay you. He's a faithful God. He will definitely repay when you offer. The, because righteousness is sacrificial. Righteousness is what? It's sacrificial. It's not bread and butter. If somebody tells you, say, oh, I'm a righteous man, hallelujah. I am holy, hallelujah. It is sacrificial. It's not a life that is sweet or bread and butter. It's a life that is very tough. You have not been, I was telling people, the when we, at the beginning of our ministry, when we, 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 had, we were in the house over a little bit over three months without a light. When I mean a little bit, it can be a day or two late after, without light in winter. They disconnected our power, gas was not working, electricity was not working because we hope we didn't pay. When we started ministry, we had a lot of, because we jumped into the ministry by faith. We couldn't pay anything. The court, we were there. The children were there. My wife was pregnant too. And all of us were sleeping, sleeping in the sitting room just to conceive heat. Because we couldn't sleep in our various rooms. The, the rooms were very, very, very cold. Nobody could go to bed. We just put something, remove some bed covers and everything, put them in the sitting room to sleep. And we put candles. We light, we lit. Every night we were sleeping with candles every night and we, that did not stop us from singing and praising god every night you if you came across our by our window in the night you would think we have just one lotto the way we'll be singing singing dancing clapping heavily sweating that's what we were living during those periods the children were younger at that time very young that time but god showed up one day we had we there was things to do to have the light pulled back we need, we, if, for instance, if you just call the, the power company, say, uh, we just moved to this house. They will just come and lie. You say, where is the former one that was? He has moved out. They will do what? They will switch it on. And they will give them, that's what people do. They give them another name. And they just turn it on. But we say, we will not do that. No matter what happened. We will not do that. We will make sure we pay them all their money and they will come and put it back on and the lord showed up the first thing that happened is that we received a check we didn't know how it happened it just came to the mail i didn't apply for it i cannot remember applying for anything that will send me a check and all i know is that it was my name on the check i don't know how it happened so what i'm trying to tell you is that righteousness sometimes might look that there's no profit but there is profit 
The Bible is not a liar when it says righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach. But sometimes when you are righteous, it will land you in many things that will say, my God, I thought you said righteousness is, a, is good. It, it exalts nature. But this one has not exalted me. It land me in trouble. But just wait a little bit. Trust him. That's what it says here. Offer. He said when you are offering the sacrifice of righteousness, be what? Trust him. He didn't say do it by yourself. Because you cannot do it by yourself. You need to do it, do it by trusting him. When you do it trusting him, you will see what he will do. It, God does not appear immediately, but you will see in the long run what the Lord will do. Zechariah 7, 4 to 10, we are still on fasting. People that fast for everything, only righteousness they don't fast about. Holiness they don't fast about. Upright, no wonder why they have to fast every day for one problem or the other. Because if you don't fast to be holy and righteous, you will pay. I told you before that if you, if you don't keep the word of God, you will have to sacrifice also by enemies, whether you like it or not. If you don't pray to be holy, you don't fast to be righteous, you don't pray to, to obey God, you only pray to receive blessing, miracle, and job, you will not cease to pray for them. That is not the cause. It is the sacrifice you have to make. Because the Bible says we must seek for the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Everything will come. But when we are pursuing everything and praying about and fasting about everything, we don't pray and, and fast about righteousness and holiness, then you begin to fast for every other thing. If you don't fast for them, they will not come. If you don't pray bitterly for them, they will not come. Because you have not put yourself in what? In the situation of praying for holiness. Most of the time, when you see me, I'm, I'm doing dry fast. It's not because I want anything superordinary or extraordinary. It is just because I have just noticed that it seems my spirit is getting weak. I need to be on fire. Then I will just cease food. I will just get angry, angry at food, say I don't want to eat. Because I look, at, I don't look at the success of this world in holiness. I look for, I look at the joy of heaven. Because when we pursue this world at the expense of the joy that is in heaven, you pray fast for car, pray fast for blessing, pray fast for career, pray fast for money, pray fast for everything in this world, in this world, in this world. At the end of the day, we abandon all the spiritual matters. It's a danger of fire. I am not saying that you should not pray for car. Please don't misunderstand me. Since I started today, I have been telling you I'm trying to balance it. That these things that are good for God, when you sing, the first one I told you, song and thanksgiving, is good. But the Lord saying, if it does not come with righteousness, he doesn't want it. Is that true of us? Now, it says tithe and offering. It's good. But the Lord said, there are some offering and tithe I don't want. Is that, is that true of us? Number three, fasting is good. But the Lord said, there are some lifestyle I want from you, even though you are fasting every day. How can you be fasting to me every day and you are not holy? How can you be coming to me whenever you are in trouble in fasting? You are not righteous. That is what the law has a problem with. It's not that the fasting is not good. So for the sake of my time, please read the Osea at home yourself. Osea 7, 4 to 10. Let me move to the next one. It says religious practices. It can also be sacrificial. Religious practices. If you see the way religion, they practice religion. We have different kind of religion on heart. We have Islam, we have Buddhism, we have uh, many other ones. We are idol worshipping and so much, some other ones that I don't know their names. Every religion has their practices. And some of them you need to see. There was one we were watching on documentary yesterday on TV in India. They call it religion. If you see the way they, they look like, they look, they, they, they look funny to me. Because they, I don't know whether it's their demon that they are worshipping that has them to look like that in the festival. All of them, they do it color, color, they rub it on everybody's face. They rub it on, including people that are graduates, intellectual. No wonder. You see, having three degrees does not mean that somebody is not foolish. If you don't have Jesus, you can have three degrees. Master, uh, fourth degree, master, doctorate, and be foolish. Because what, what do I call foolishness? When a, a, a doctorate degree holder is among the people that are doing like children and they are banging their head with powder and they bang the other head with powder, they rub another face, his glasses fell down from there, he, it, he put the glasses back and they are just doing like that. Say, you see? You see what religion can do to people? When you have religious practices without Jesus, it's useless life. 
He make life ridiculous. The same thing you see even in the church, not only the Hindu. If you like, you go on the TV or internet, you see a, a, you see pastors climbing over women that he said they should lie down on the floor. And they'll be marching and walking over them like this. He'll be walking over them like this. Woman, somebody's wife, walking over them and putting leg on any area of the body that they want. And they'll be, they be blessing him. Thank you, pastor, man of God. Thank you, man of God. Thank you, man of God. That leg is blessing. Ah! And some of them are graduates of university. That is religious practices. What, what am I saying is that if you don't sacrifice to be holy, you will sacrifice to be foolish. They are foolish. Because they, 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 they did not seek to obey God, therefore, they were, they were believing lies. Because their ears are seared with iron. That's what the book of Timothy said. And therefore, because they refuse to believe God, in the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 28, it says, because they retain not God. They refuse to retain God in knowledge. Dear God, they were given to a debased or reprobate mind. And they begin to believe all things and do all useless things. You see another one, they line up, a young pastor, he line up ladies like this. He begin to anoint them with his mouth. He put mouth to anoint all of them, including degree holders. Some of them are more beautiful than that man. That ordinarily, the man will not be able to stop them on the street to talk to them. But because they come into his church, they become his subject. He just bring your mouth here. He put it, he wash it, wash it, and you are blessed. They say, thank you, man of God. Can you imagine that kind of thing? Because they refuse to be holy. They refuse to be obedient to God. And dear God, therefore, they are sold to stupidity and foolishness. Hmm. Believing lies and being molested by human beings. You see another one, all you, want, all you need to go to is to go to YouTube you see what I'm talking about. You see another one, he, he, they will need that. Papa, they just need that when they come. He put his head and put powder on his head and washing it on their head. The whole place, I don't know whether it's... It, the, the old, you bring them close like that and you wash it. Uh -huh. you Sometimes if you like, if you like it, uh -huh. in, the church. in the church, he just press them to himself like this first, whether men or women. He press them, hold them tight, then he put his head, they now begin to wash his head on their head. And they thank him very much for doing that. So when you are not living sacrificially for God, you don't have sacrificial righteousness, you have sacrificial foolishness. That is what I meant the other time. Whether you like it or not, you will sacrifice. If you don't sacrifice to be holy, you will sacrifice one way or the other. Or you might be some of the people that go and consult man of God with 700 pounds. That one happened in England here. I watched somebody attesting to that on the TV. I believe my wife too was watching that day. To consult a man of God after administration, the man said he wanted 700 pounds per consultation. And some of them said they have money. Now they are, you know churches have ATM machine now, the wireless. Churches have wireless. You don't have money, you say, oh, the man of God have wireless on the table. The one they put on the table there, you all put your card or your right check. Then you will now begin to talk to him. What do you want? They have VIP visits. Ordinary visit. I am not. I am not exaggerating. I don't say. You people know me. I don't say what I don't know. They have VIP. They have ordinary. So which class do you want to go? Do you want to see man of God or VIP or you want ordinary? Where you just say be blessed and you go. Because they retain not God in their knowledge. They do not want to sacrificially live sin, and therefore they are sacrificing their life penny to feed some jokers that call themselves ministers. You must sacrifice to please God. You don't just have to say, I, I, I cannot live like this. Some people say, ah, Pastor, I can't live like that. I, but if you don't live like that, you will go and give money to those people. You have to do one. Do you want to speak to God yourself or you want somebody to speak to him? Your father, just like my children, they will not allow somebody to say, they want something from me, they will not go and meet somebody say, go and speak to my father. That is the way people do. And they will not be going, giving some other person money to come and speak to me. Some of them will not put mouth in their mouth to come and speak to me. Some of them will bark on their head to come and speak to me. Some will march on them like this to come and speak to me. Some of you will give them appointment in the church office to sleep with them. Many women that are looking for babies, 
These there are some satanic people that call themselves men of God that sleep with them. They will say, if I don't open the road, the child cannot come. So I have to open the road for you, then you go to your husband to continue the rest. And you'll see a child within one month. There are plenty like that. The Bible already told us that in the end time, they will be multiplied. That is why he said you must be careful if you are a child of God to seek him sacrificially so that you will not fall victim of these people. They are on any street. They are on everywhere. They are in any city. They are in any town. All you need to do is to seek God sacrificially so that you will not be a prey in the hands of these kind of people. They do religion. Don't be religious. Don't just be religious. Be heavenly. Be spiritual. Love the Lord passionately. Because religious practices is one way that people think they can, they can offer sacrifice to God. And it fails them. You make some people feast on your life. They tell you to pray. They feast on, your, on, your, on whatever you labor for. Hebrew 10, 11 and 12. We're almost finished. Hebrew 10, 11 and 12. I hope I'm not too difficult today with the word of God. Uh -huh. I was difficult last week. Some people didn't show up today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I can reduce this thing. I will be saying, God, please help me so I can. But I can't. When, once I stay here, I can't manage myself anymore. Yes. Praise the Lord. 11, he said, every, he said, and every priest start ministry daily and offering repeat, repeatedly the same sacrifices, mm -hmm. which can never take away sin. Uh -huh. 12, but this man, after he has offered one sacrifice for sin, forever mm -hmm. sat down at the right hand of God from that time, waiting till his Enemies are made his footstool. Amen. Amen. You see, that said, but verse 11 says, And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice of sin, forever sat at the right hand of God. Of God. From that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sacrificed. Amen. Amen. So by one offering, the Lord perfected our what? Our sacrifice. But the other people, people that do not want to seek the Lord, to obey him, they follow religious practices with this same, this same process that God has come to cancel. God came to cancel sacrifices and sacrificial offering, but because people do not want to follow God, they refuse to retain God, then they follow the pattern of offering again. He giving honesty offering to ministers, giving honesty offering to see vision for them, giving honesty offering to buy. Do you know that was a, I was watching on the TV a man, a man, no, I don't want to say a man of God, a man, a preacher, a preacher imported one container, of water and the package in from Switzerland. You know I don't say what I don't I don't see. He said it himself when I was watching him on the TV. He said this water was not made in Nigeria. This was made in in Switzerland so that people will not they will not contaminate it and they say uh, this man has killed people. So we we didn't trust local uh, manufacturer. We we water ragolis water imported from Switzerland and now they were selling the small bottle for 5,000 naira. It was small, small like this, the waters. They make it, they told the company to make them in a the small, small bottle. And when he told the people, the church members, he said, it has come, hallelujah. All of them say, yeah! He said, I'm not, just put this in your life, in your home, any business. I just want to flush away rubbish from your lives. That's the way he said it. Yes. Amen, thank you. You wash it too. I want to wash away the mess from your lives, all of you. They jubilated. Say, we just make it very easy. Just 5,000. I know that the container will finish that day. Because they refuse to retain God in their knowledge. They do not want to do sacrificial righteousness. Therefore, they will do sacrificial penalty. They will pay to get whatever they are looking for. 
from some smart people that think that all of them are foolish in my church. And you see them, they are really foolish. Plenty, but foolish. What if the people are plenty like, how can somebody tell, somebody is supposed to wake up to tell another person and say, how can, Ragolis also, the big Ragolis is 200 naira. How do we get this tiny boat for 5,000? Maybe transportation from Switzerland or container shipment. Then, so the company in Switzerland now anointed it. Is that what you are saying? The, the Swiss company anointed the water and ship it to Lagos and they become 5,000 to sell to people for anointing. May the Lord have mercy on the church of God today. May the Lord have mercy on human beings. Please, it is the end time. Wake up. Be righteously sacrificial. Pursue righteousness with all your strength. You will speak to God yourself. The Bible says when your spirit is pure, you will see God. He will speak to you. He's always around you to speak. He doesn't want anybody in between. The error of somebody in between him and you is gone. This is the error of him speaking to you, yourself. The, people, the one that cannot comprehend is some people that go to some pastor, they say, this, the Lord told me that this is your husband. The Lord has stopped doing that since Adam and Eve. So if anybody goes to say, this is your husband, the Lord told me that you must marry. And we see some people... Your pastor calling from Africa, calling people that are here. Say, the Lord say you are my wife. Then they see them on the Facebook. The Lord say you are my wife. Say you will marry me. Because they want passport to go to Europe. And the, the young lady too will be falling for God. Will be shaking. And they will check. Say, ah, this is really a man of God. Say, okay, sir. Okay, sir. If the Lord will, who am I? I'm not talking to you about what I don't know. There's a lady. I don't want to mention the, the country. She fell for this kind of thing. After the marriage, she was in trouble. She called me. She said, Pastor, I don't understand all this thing. I don't even know how I find myself in this. This man just said it's the will of God. I said, did God talk to you too? He said, no, but the man just told me it's the God that said you is, I'm his wife. I said, that is your case. You are married. Carry your cross and journey to eternity. Because you have, been, you have acted foolishly. God does not speak to one person in marriage. It confirmed to both of you about the journey. Marriage is the journey of two people. And the time whether you live long or you live, you live short. There are people that die because they're marriage. They're supposed to live long, but because of marriage, their life was cut short. Marriage also determines whether you make heaven or you go to hell. Because there's a lot of battle in marriage. So if you don't pray and you say it's only the man that says, God said you are my wife, then you are in trouble. Unless you come to God again. So I told the lady, I said, the only way you can save you, come back to God and quickly hold on to him. Even in that trouble, he will save you. You know, it's not too late because God can still save us in trouble when we hold on to him. But when you make one mistake and you still continue to make mistake, then that's what can cause trouble. But when we have already made one mistake, then we hold on to him. The rest of my life, God, I know you are the only one that can carry me through this. When you hold on to him, he will surely carry you through. And you fulfill your purpose as if you had never made a mistake before. That's what I like about God. He will bring the story back as if you have never made a mistake. A lady I was speaking, speaking to about it, she was saying, oh, my marriage is a, is a mistake. I said, it's not a mistake. In as much you have already done it, it's no longer a mistake. But all you need to do is to hold on to Jesus. He said, but pastor, you don't know, this man is not born again. I said, but you know that before you marry. So, why? You know, I said, no, the issue is, the issue is that we are, we are two of us were not even born again. I said, hey, that's why I said it's not a mistake. Because you born again first does not make the other man a mistake. All you need to do is to hold on to Jesus. Be a good woman that the, the man will see, the, if he doesn't read Bible, but he will see Bible in your life. When he can see Bible in your life, that you live like a decent woman, prayerful woman, decent child of God, he will be born again very soon. Not long from there, the woman called me to say, Pastor, your word came to pass. It is really the will of God. My husband is changing. You see that? But if you don't hold on to God, after one mistake, you make several many mistakes. And they will get out of hand later. So that's what I'm coming for today. When you are ready to fall into any mistake, you will need to sacrifice now. And what is the sacrifice? I don't want to sin anymore. Not, believe me, not to decide not to sin is a sacrifice. Is that true or not? People that are living holy. 
It's a sacrifice. Sometimes you feel like doing something, you cannot do it. Sometimes you feel like speaking something, some kind of word against somebody that just brought a matter to you to answer them in their own way. How many, how many Christians have spoken with unbelievers before? And they brought a matter to you that is so smelly. You want to give them back? You say, no, I can't speak like this. They will just say, he's not a Christian. You just say, okay, ma, thank you very much. God bless you, ma. I will be careful next time. People that are not right, they will see the point to your nose, say, what is that nonsense? You just say, ah, I'm sorry, ma. <laughs> I'll be careful next time. But so, the old, the old Samuel will come in you, they say, what do you mean? You say, oh, God, glory, glory to you. It's okay, ma, I will, I will be careful next time. Is that not a sacrificial life? It's a sacrificial life. To be honest, let us call a spade a spade. Holy life is sacrificial. If you want to think that, oh, some people will deceive you, say, we live by faith, hallelujah. It's a lie. You live sacrificial. The Bible says it in Psalm chapter 4, verse 5, it is sacrificial righteousness. It's a sacrificial righteous lie. The last one, some other people, they decide to say, okay, let me sacrifice to God by giving regular confession. So when they come next, you say, Father, when I was going yesterday, I stole, I stole money. The father will say, the Lord forgive you, my daughter. Say, Thank you, father. He goes again. Next Sunday, he come back again. Father, I just committed adultery last week. The father will say, oh, the Lord forgive you, my daughter. He goes away. He say, God, I'm, you know I'm sacrificing. I'm going there every day to confess my sin. Oh. I'm confessing my sin. I don't want anything in my life. You know, because the father does not see them, they have to see that in the place. They just hear their voices. So these are the practices some people do. Regularly confessing, and they just the more they confess, the more they do. They give effort, they put effort into confession, but they don't put any effort into repentance. Do you see what I mean? They put effort, they remove shame to go and confess, but they don't they don't live any life or put any effort to repent from that sin. God does not want that. So please go and read also Nehemiah chapter 9, 1 and 3 for the sake of time. Now, conclusion. He says, the sacrifice that the Lord wants, we have seen one the other time, the righteous sacrifice. That is Psalm chapter 4, verse 5. Then this one says, it's in Psalm 51, verse 17 also. Psalm 51, 17. The sacrifice that the Lord wants us to do. The only sacrifice that He wants is not all what I have listed. This is the only, yes. Praise the Lord. 17 he says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, uh -huh. a broken and a contrite heart. Amen. This, O oh God, you will not decide. You see that? The sacrifice of the Lord is a broken spirit, a contrite heart, and a bro what is the meaning of contrite? Contrite means when you are genuinely sorrowful. You realize that what you have done is no good. After you have been, you have been challenged by somebody, or when you have seen it in the Bible, somebody told you, say, ah, brother, that thing you have done, look at the way you have behaved. You're supposed to be a Christian. You say, oh my God, how will I do? But some people, when you tell them like that, what do they do? Say, please, don't judge me. How many people have heard that before? <laughs> you are judging me. You are judging me. They just put up the, the strong defense so that you can say, ah, I'm not God. They just want you to go. It's not a judgment. You are just trying to say... <laughs> What is the meaning of judgment? You are trying to say somebody say, ah, it's not good to behave like that as a Christian. Is that a judgment? No. It's a statement of correction. And don't forget when we are reading the obedience, we say obedience means to submit to instruction, correction, direction, and commandment. That is what you mean by obedience. Now you are telling somebody, ah, Christian, don't behave like that, sister. You need to do better. Don't judge me, please. You are not my God. Leave the judgment between me and my God. Please leave me alone here. That person is simply telling you that, what? Well, I am not a sacrificial Christian. That is what it means. It's not a sacrificial. Sacrificial Christian will listen to you say, ah, a contrite spirit and a broken heart. He will be sorry. And sometimes you see some of them crying. Those are the children of God. According to the book of Hebrews chapter 12, he said, anyone that embraced chastisements, the Lord look at them as, as children. But those who say, don't judge me, the Lord look at them as what? As bastards. That's what the Bible says. It's not my grammar. It's written in the book of Hebrews chapter 12. If you read it from verse 7, from verse 5. 
anybody say, don't talk me, don't talk to me like that. I can be a Christian, I'm not a fool. You think I'm a fool? My mouth is not sealed with Bible. The Lord has delivered me. He says, I'm not giving the spirit of, of timidity, but the spirit of boldness, of power, of mind, and love. I am bold in the Lord. Hallelujah. I speak to any situation and circumstances. They quote Bible to sin. That is not the kind of Christianity Bible I call it. He wants us to be submissive. When somebody tells you as a Christian to say, you have done this and you're just happy, it doesn't bother you. It doesn't break you. It does not do anything in your mind. A brother was telling me one day in Lagos, he went to drop somebody at the airport. The person was traveling to America from Lagos and he was coming. So those public transportation, the yellow buses, the yellow mini buses, they call them Danfo, and he brushed the car he was driving. And the brother came out of the car. He, he held the driver driver by the shirt, the bus driver. He held him by the shirt, he shook him. The police, you know, the uh, traffic policemen were around. Yeah. And the traffic policemen came around to say, ah, oh, it's okay, oh God, leave him, leave him. He said, no, 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 he has to fix my car. You need to look at what he has done to my car. Look, it is the brother himself that told me the story. So I always told you, I don't like to tell third party story. If you are not the one that told me, I will not say it. Or I see it myself. The brother said, when he is now, he's now living in Ireland. So when we we're talking about this issue, that was when he mentioned that story. He said, then he, he, he was causing trouble. A lot of people were surrounding him. They were begging him. He said, no, he will not go. He must fix this car or give the money immediately. Ah, the poli even police, traffic police, two of them came to talk to him. He said he refused. And one of them, he now said, if not because I've been born again Christian, I would have dealt with you. I would have dealt with you seriously, this man. Then the, he said, the police, one of the police said, you are born again. He said, yes, that's why I, I, it's this easy. Then the police said, if this is the way Christian born again behave, according to the man, he said, the police said to him, if this is the way Christian born again behave, I will never be born again. You are not a good example of born again Christian. You are born again, we are begging you since. The born again, I know they don't beg them long time. He said, when the man, when the police said that, he just took his car. He didn't even say bye-bye to the man. He just enter. He just entered his car. He started the car. Everybody was looking at him and said, what has happened to him? They don't know that they are hitting him. Oh, yeah. He has forgotten that he was born again. And he brought the story himself. That's the way God works. God wants him to disgrace himself. You know, sometimes God wants to disgrace Christian. You forget that you are born again. I say, if not because Jesus is living in me, then you have disgraced yourself if you say that. You have disgraced yourself if you say that. So he, he said he entered his car. Even when he got to everybody, he said, Well, come, he didn't answer anybody. He just went straight to his knees. He said, God, I disappointed you somewhere today. Unbeliever telling me that if that's the way born again behave, they will never be. Ah! That is because he's a candidate of heaven. So Christians will say, uh huh, is that me? Am I, am I a fool? But then pay my money. I see, my wife was in, my wife was in one place one day. When born again, three born again, including myself, we were talking about an issue. We show Bible. The brother, what did the brother say about Bible? He wanted to flick the Bible away. They bought a Sunday school teacher. Usher and Sunday school it's Usher in the church. Usher in the church. He took the Bible and said, I will flick that Bible away. What nonsense? I tell you about my Bible, you are telling me about Bible. Christians forget easily when they are born again, when they are in trouble. You see, they forget quickly. Those are the Christians that need to be broken. A broken spirit and a contrite heart, the Lord will not reject. That is what message I brought to you today. Two sacrifices the Lord wants you to do. The first one is found in the book of Psalm chapter 4, verse 5. It says, sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice of what? Of righteousness. In the trust of God. And this one says, a contrite heart and a broken spirit. You want to do, but you say, I am, I am no longer this way. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, not I. Not yet I, but I still live. But the life I live now is no longer mine. But it's for Christ who loved me and died for my sin. But if you remove yourself from the cross all the time, there is danger. Who will nail you to the cross again? Every time there is a problem, you run, you remove yourself. Say, God, excuse me, I want to deal with this brother. I'm coming. You deal and you go back. 
We watch a Christian movie. I'm finishing on this, please forgive me. We watch a Christian movie one day. A brother, they, they show the movie of altar and sacrifice. So on the on the in the spiritual realm, they used to see men, uh, children of God on the altar. They would sleep like dead person on the altar. So this brother, they carry, they wanted to bribe him at work. Somebody brought a heavy bag of money for him. He just stood up on the altar. He left the altar. He went to go and take the money. So by the time he grabbed the bag, they now removed cutlass to cut him. He was now running back to the altar. <laughs> he was running back to go and sleep back on the altar. So that they will not be... They, because if he's on the altar, nobody can kill him. So he was running back to the altar before he got there, the man already appeared in the altar. He didn't run back. He didn't know what... So he, the man made sure that he didn't get back to the altar. And if not for the grace of intervention of God, they would have killed him. You see, they use money to take him out of altar. So my message for you is that what is it that always takes you out of the altar? The altar of righteousness. The altar of holiness. The altar of uprightness. What is it that the devil showed to you as a bait to take you out of it? Is it sweet? Is it bread? Is it money? Is it anything that you want that used to take you out of it? Be careful. Be vigilant. Devil is going running about like a roaring lion looking for wool to devour. Don't let him devour you. Find yourself back to the altar of sacrifice. Tomorrow might be too late. Obedient is better than sacrifice. sacrifice. Obedient is better than what? Sacrifice. Says the book of 1 Samuel chapter 5, verses 23. You see, the Lord gave assignment to Saul. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1 and 3, he gave him instruction. You must do this. You must do this. Kill all the people in the land, including the animal and their king. But in verse 7 to 9 of that 1 Samuel chapter 15, Saul did his own will. After the Lord gave him victory there, he thought he was the one that won the battle. It was God that went before him. He won and he did what he liked. He speared the king and he took all the animals and all the fat things that he liked from there. And it went home. And the Lord sent his prophet to him, go and tell Saul, Prophet Samuel, go and tell Saul, I told him to do something and he disobeyed. Then he was telling Prophet Samuel, say, ah, is it because of God we have done that? At least we need some animals, fat, fat one that we saw there. We discovered that we can sacrifice to God. We need it for our God to praise him, to worship him, to, to you know, God need it. That's why we brought it. Someone said, but did God say you should bring it if you need it? He said, but he just said, uh -uh. we don't demand that we bring something for God from war. The Lord that said you, they said you should destroy everything. Did he ask you to bring it? He couldn't answer the question. In fact, he denied that he brought anything initially. Someone and all this bleating of the, of the cow and the, and the goat are here in your compound. Where are they from? All those men, <laughs> where are they from? He couldn't deny it anymore. Then somebody said, you see, obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. There is no sacrifice that pleases God than sacrifice of obedience. Rise up on your feet. There is no any sacrifice that is better than obedience. Some people go and fight for God in disobedience. So, ah, we don't demand it that we, we fight for the name of God in these people. We must defend our God. In defending God, you commit sin. It's disobedient. We don't disobey to obey God. We can never disobey to obey God. Obedient has no partial, has no halfway. It, is, it must be full. So begin to ask God, Lord, is there any way that I have disobeyed you? That has, uh, that has allowed me to pay sacrifice of that disobedience. Father, forgive me today. Let every sacrificial punishment of disobedience stop in my life today because you have taken every penalty of my sin and you took them to the heavens, Lord, before the Lord Almighty. You have taken the sacrifice of my sin. Every disobedience that have led me to pay this sacrifice daily, yearly, Forgive me of them, Lord. Remove every sacrifice from disobedience from my life. 
Have mercy on me, Lord. Have some of, some of, there are many people right now that they are paying penalty of disobedience one way or the other. Begin to ask them for mercy and tell them to depart from your life today. In the name of Jesus, every disobedience that have led to any penalty of pain, of sorrow, of disgrace, of humiliation, frustration, discouragement, lack, poverty. Oh Lord, my Father, every disobedience that have permitted the enemy over to strike at my life. Father, every disobedience that have broken the edge around my life, the edge of protection, the edge of safety, the edge of victory. Oh Lord, have mercy on me today. My God and my Father, have mercy. Ancient of death, have mercy. King of glory, have mercy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. 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 Have mercy ancient of days. Have mercy, King of glory. Every disobedience that I have opened up for the enemies against my life, children, and home. Father, let your blood cancel them today. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. And stop every satanic sacrifices in my life. Stop every painful sacrifice of pain, sorrow, disgrace, humiliation, frustration, and shame. Stop in my life today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For I am free like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snares are broken. I am saved in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah.